Today we're going to work on the stole and the manifold. Okay, there are different kinds of fringes that you can put on the bottom along the edge. This one here, you have to sew all these around and hook them together. And then once they're together, you can turn it and then turn it again and stitch it down. Otherwise, it definitely will unravel, especially if you're going to put it on the top. It does look nice. Okay, the next one. I only brought two samples. There are different kinds of other kinds of fringes as well. This one here, you can cut the bullion pieces, but it still has to be turned twice and stitched down. Okay, so what you should do is you should take your fringe and you should uh, turn the one edge and stitch it onto here after you've tacked that one side down, right? And just show a little bit of the fabric you're working on. Catch the fabric and the under, whatever you've used, used whether you use horse hair or something else underneath it, just don't catch the fabric on the other side, okay? And you're going to just tack it in place. And when you come to maybe about one inch from the edge, figure out, oh, I need this much to turn and turn, and figure it out, and then tack it together, and then attach it. You should not be able to see the edge of the fringe from here, okay? So if you can see it, then you've made a mistake and you'll have to undo it and make it uh, a little shorter, okay? Okay, put that aside. Okay. I put the crosses, I put a little cross in the middle, a one inch cross, there it is here. And I put a three inch cross at the bottom of the stove you may decide to use a bigger one, that's up to you. But if you use a three inch cross, I put it three and a half inches from the edge. Center it into whatever pattern I want, okay? This one here, I didn't decide to center it on any particular pattern. On the lining, you lay the lining with the good side down, right? And you lay your stole and manifold down and you can use a quilting ruler Measure a half inch on either side, an inch on the bottom, and also an inch in the middle. Okay, I do my stole in half, half and half. Lay it down, cut it out, you know, knock it, cut it. And so here it is, an inch and an inch. And you turn it under and stitch it here. Okay, so when I'm measuring it, I just put a ruler underneath and I measure an inch and I cut it. Okay. You can do the same thing on the manipole. You can do it in one piece on the manipole if you have enough fabric. Okay, where's the end? Hmm, trying to find the end I'm working on so I can show you how to stitch that. Oh, here it is. I knew it was here somewhere. We're going to take needle, put it underneath the lining after we tucked it under. We'll run it along the top edge of the fabric. Run it along the right underneath that stitch where you came up, go down. Run it right along the top of the lining. Okay. Watch right along here, along the top, right along the edge of the bottom. Okay. Here we go. Take the lining, just tuck it under. So you just want just a little bit of the fabric to show. That's how you do this, this particular kind of lining on this one here. Okay. 
for the manifold. We're going to need a little uh, two by four inch piece. Your little two two by four inch piece will be turned. Okay, here we go. Turn it to the middle, to the middle again, and then in half, and stitch it. Okay, press it. You're going to attach it eight and a half inches up from the edge of the bottom of the manifold. What I do is I attach one side and just mark this side. And as I'm stitching and coming around, when I get close enough, sometimes I even do, you know, this whole thing and leave this open and then attach that later. Okay, you're gonna need a 14 inch piece of braided elastic. Well, you can use half inch, three eighths, five eighths, whatever you want. I don't know, I don't think I'd do it too big. So you, you take the 14 inch piece and you overlap them and then you sew it on either side and then attach it underneath the little one inch cross. So you can, father can put his hand through. Okay. If you were going to do a regular manipole and you did not want to have any trim on it, you could just put the right sides together after you put the crosses on, of course. Flip it to the other side, press it, and then you could maybe one inch from the bottom on either side, you could um, then attach your fringe. You can put it on top, or you can put it inside. If you want to do it inside, do it like I showed you on this one, and then you can just stitch. I'm going to show you how to stitch this fringe so it doesn't get caught on here. Okay, let's find the one. There it is. This one here. So the idea on this little fringe here <laughs> is not to get the thread caught into the fringe, which it's almost doing here. Gets caught in there. So, okay, got to be careful. So I put a knot under there, of course, right? Now I'm going to run the needle across, try to keep the thread up, not get entangled into the fringe. Find an area that's open between the fringe, hold the thread in the back, flip it over so that thread is not going to get caught in the fringe. Wherever I came up here, I'm going to go down, run it across, okay, find the opening where you can fit that thread through, okay, flip that one, bring the thread up, get that other piece out of the way. It doesn't always work, a lot of times that thread gets caught, it really takes a little bit of practice. So you're going to run the needle across and keep doing the same thing. Put the thread through, flip the fringe, and then sew it across. Okay? There we go. Now, if you want to add trim all the way around, this is only a sample, okay? <laughs> okay. So I didn't have anything I was working on at the time. So the idea is to attach the half inch trim to the edge of the stole or the manifold. So you attach it by lining up the side. It should only stick out just an eighth of an inch, okay? And you, you sew it right down here, right on the inside. When you come to the corners, you have to fold it and fold it until it makes a square corner like that. Sometimes the stove will angle out at the bottom and it'll be a little tricky and you'll have to spend a lot of time just trying to get it straight. Do the best you can, okay? But you, you've got to attach the fringe first underneath. Because I'm putting this trim on, I just put the fringe 
and sew it on. I don't. I don't. You can tack it. I usually sew it so it just doesn't move. Okay. And then I put the trim like this. So um, every time I put this on, I start here, go around, but I leave this much hanging down. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck it underneath. And then you have to fold it like this. Fold it under again, like this. Take that piece. You're going to have to work with it and you're going to tuck this piece as well under. Hmm. Maybe I'll go over that again, okay? Okay. So we have this piece hanging down. We're going to tuck it under. This piece coming across. Hmm. Fold it this way. Then you have to fold it along the bottom edge. Okay. And then tuck it under. And you have to sew this down a separate. <laughs> you cannot sew this this corner down and then expect to be able to put the lining underneath. Okay, so think about that. So this part, part down by itself, by hand, because now you have the lining you have to put underneath there. Okay, so here's the lining. Okay, so I oh, should have made it longer for you for the. Let me do that. Make it a little longer because it's usually an inch down, right? Okay. Okay. What I do is I fold under the lining piece first, fold that inch underneath so you don't see it. Okay? You're not going to see it underneath the trim. Okay? And you're going to take this other piece here, other piece, and you're going to tuck it underneath the trim and sew it down on the edge. Okay, go over that one more time. Okay, so here we have, when we put on the trim, we're going to sew the inside. Then when we go, then after we have this all the trim sewn on, then we put the lining piece underneath. It, you know, it's not exactly that you're going to cut this lining this time the half inch. It's a little bit less, but you know what? If you do the half inch, you can always trim it. But if you don't, if you don't have enough, you won't be able to tuck it under, especially on these corners. Especially on these corners, you might want to even go out more because it's really very, very heavy. And you're going to have a hard time turning this lining piece if it's not wide enough. So even though the rest of it doesn't need it, when you get to the corners, you need to do a little bit more. Okay? So you just tuck it underneath, pin it, and then stitch it. See if I covered everything because uh, I do these videos and then I forget something. So let's see, we worked on both, if both stole and the maniple are the same. I showed you the fringe and how to turn it and attach it. We talked about the three inch cross and the one inch cross. We talked about the lining being a half inch and an inch. The two by four piece that attaches to the manifold, the elastic, showed you how to stitch the sides, showed you how to stitch the fringe, and the half inch trim around. So, good luck and good sewing. <laughs>